We are going to be looking at one-step equations and some algebra here. Uh, this may be the first time that you've uh, dealt with algebra, and so here's what it is. Algebra is essentially what you're doing is you're determining the value for the variable. A variable is generally and usually a letter of the alphabet that represents an unknown number. So what we're going to look at first of all is that there's three methods that we're going to look at and we'll look at some more in depth than others. So the first method, and again you may want to pause this video regularly to actually write stuff down and uh, maybe replay it to see if you're actually understanding what's happening. But the first method that we are going to use only in this section, but it's a nice way to introduce it, is the method of inspection which is just by looking at the equation and saying the answer. Uh, so for this first one, if you asked yourself what number plus 5 equals 9, I, th I think that you'd know that 4 plus 5 equals 9. So in this case, the solution to the equation is that x is equal to 4, because that's the number that x would represent. Uh, in the next one, if you see a number directly attached to a variable, the operation there is multiplication. And generally what we do to write multiplication is we use a dot. So if I was to ask myself two times what number equals negative 8, I think based on some of the multiplication rules that we know that 2 times negative 4, positive times negative is a negative. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, which gives us the solution of w in this case, sorry, the variable is w, w equals negative 4. In the next one we're doing division, and we should know that 8 divided by 4 is 2. <coughs> so your solution in this case is that p is equivalent to 8. And in the last one, a little bit more tricky, we're asking ourselves 3 times what number minus 1 is equivalent to 11? So 3 times something minus 1 equals 11. Well, the answer there is going to be 4 because 4 times 3 is equal to 12 and 12 minus 1 is 11. So in this case, x is equal to 4. So that's one method is just by inspecting and looking at the answer. However, as you move on in this chapter, be careful. It's, you aren't going to be allowed to use inspection very often. We want to focus on building up some of your skills in algebra. Uh, the second method that you're going to be investigating in your study guide particularly is the method of algebra tiles. So these diagrams here that you're seeing are algebra tiles. So let me just point out the first one here and how it represents what's happening. So let's get rid of these guys. <clears throat> first one here uh, is the equation 2 times w equals negative 8. So what you're going to learn is that shaded rectangles represent positive variables. So two w's looks like two shaded rectangles. And we're also going to learn that squares represent just integers. So negative 8 is white because it's negative. Uh, and that is, uh, they're white, eight white squares. So in what we're trying to do is solve for what 1w is equal to. So in this case, if we group these off, what you're going to find out is that each w is equivalent to negative 4. And you're seeing a connection with that particular answer there, because it's the same question, just using algebra tiles. In the next example, which we have right here, <coughs> this represents, and again, you might want to uh, sketch this out, this represents 3x's is equal to 6 because the x's are positive so they're shaded and that's equal to positive 6 and what we're going to do here is again group them off so we have that each x is equivalent to so each x is equivalent to 2 in this case okay uh, in the last example what we're going to see here and let me just group it off here so this is what it represents. Uh, when we're representing fractions or looking at fractions, this here represents p divided by 4. So we're representing when we're using fractions we're going to split it up into the number of parts and just shade one part. So that is p, so p divided by 4 is equal to 2. Okay, And what we want to do is find out what an entire pizza is equal to. So if a quarter of the pizza is equal to 2, let's just start adding some more pieces along here. So if I shaded another green piece, I should bring in two more. So each quarter is equal to two. So if I shade in another piece, that's another two. So we're using proportional reasoning. And finally, if I shade in the last piece, if that quarter is equal to two, then what we have here is the representation of the answer. So the entire P 
is equal to, whoops, uh, the entire p here is equal to 8. So that's an algebra tile uh, representation. The last type of algebra that you're going to be doing to solving algebra problems is called opposite operations. And this is by far the most critical and important method to solving operations, especially as you move forward in your math, uh, <coughs> mathematics um, in schooling. So to solve, what we can do, and we'll get into the rules here in a little bit, is I tend to suggest that we draw a line through the equals sign. And the critical part of using opposite operations is to isolate the variable and that opposite operations undo each other. You'll learn this a little bit in your study guide as well, so, and throughout the chapter. But the big idea here is, if I want to isolate this w, the operation that's happening to it right now is multiplying by 2. So the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. And in algebra, what we say, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So if we divide one side by 2, we have to divide the other side by 2. And opposite operations cancel each other out. So if those cancel each other out, we are left with w equals and negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Okay? You'll slowly get used to this. In the next question, the opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3. So I know that 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, this is not a very difficult question. I know that 3 times 2 is 6, but if I'm going to solve by opposite operations, if the opposite of multiplying is dividing, I have to do that to both sides, and this multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3 cancel each other out, and we have x equals 6 divided by 3, which is 2. And you should get into the habit of showing your work in this way. In the next question, if we want to isolate p, we need to do the opposite of dividing by 4. The opposite of dividing by 4 is multiplying by 4. And if we multiply one side by 4, we have to multiply the other side by 4. These opposites, multiplying and dividing by 4, cancel each other out. And we have a solution of p equals 2 times 4, which is 8. Okay? Uh, the trickiest one here is what happens, what's the opposite of this? So what you may be wanting to do is seeing a minus sign and thinking the opposite is adding 5. And this is very normal in what I see students doing. However, what we want to do is do the opposite operation. At this moment, the operation here is actually not subtracting, it's multiplying. So the opposite of multiplying by negative 5 is not adding 5, nor is it multiplying by or dividing by positive 5. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. So the opposite of multiplying by negative 5 is dividing by negative 5. So your solution here, after we've canceled out the opposite operations, is x equals 45 divided by negative 5, which is negative 9. Okay? So in conclusion to this lesson, I just want to review. So again, pause this stuff and write it down. And you want to get in the habits of drawing the line up the, the equal sign and showing the opposite operations and canceling out, because that's proper math. Uh, here's the four rules of algebra that we're going to be repeating throughout this entire chapter. Uh, the four rules of algebra are the following. The goal of algebra, first of all, is to isolate the variable. Okay, Just like we've done here. We've got the variable by itself. The second rule of algebra that you always need to abide by is what you do to one side of the equation you must do to the other. And you must show it. So if I'm doing it multiplying by 4, I need to show it on both sides. Or dividing by negative 5, I need to do that to both sides. <clears throat> the third rule of algebra is that opposite operations undo each other. Okay. So what you're noticing is multiplying and dividing undo each other. Uh, adding and subtracting, undo each other, all that sort of stuff. And as we move forward in this chapter, I'm going to show some examples shortly, uh, we perform opposite operations in the reverse order of operations. So as we get to multiple opposites, what you're going to see is we do opposites in reverse bed mass. So we do the opposite of adding and subtracting first, of multiplying and dividing second, and brackets third. Uh, in this particular year, we're not going to look at the opposite of exponents. So that's it for the lesson. However, you may want to have a preview of what's coming up and what's going to be a little bit more difficult. So finish writing that down, and then maybe just put down your pen and watch what I'm going to do in the purple box, because that'll give you a, an idea of what we're going to get into here. So there we go. Okay, 
So I'm going to really quickly solve these ones for those who are interested in uh, seeing what we're going to get into here in a little while. So the first thing you want to do when you're solving equations is put a line through the equal sign and perform opposites. And as I mentioned previously, we always want to do the opposite of adding and subtracting and then multiplying and dividing uh, and then brackets. So this first one, the opposite of dividing by negative 3 is not adding 3. Uh, however, the opposite of dividing by negative 3 is multiplying by negative 3. What we do to one side, we do to the other. These cancel out and we're left with x equals negative 7 times negative 3 which is 21. This next question is the first one we're going to look at and I know the answer is 3. I know that the answer is 2 times 3 minus 1 is equal to 5. However, what we're going to do is actually show you with opposite operations. First of all, we want to do the opposite of adding or subtracting. So the opposite of subtracting 1 is adding 1. These cancel out. Okay, and that leaves us with the following. It leaves us with 2x is equal to 6, because 5 plus 1 is 6. And then the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. Because what we're doing by doing opposite operations is we're isolating the variable. So here we have x equals 3. Okay, uh, in the next one, the opposite of subtracting 1, because we want to isolate the variable, is adding 1. Again, I know the answer here is going to be 12 because 12 divided by 2 minus 1 is equal to 5. But I want to do this algebraically. So we have x divided by 2 is equal to 6. The opposite of dividing by 2 is multiplying by 2 because these cancel out. And now what you can see is the variables by itself. So we're going to have x equals 6 times 2 is 12. OK, the last two we'll do really quickly. Subtract 1. The opposite of adding is subtracting. Uh, then we can get to this point here where we have x divided by negative 2 is equal to 4. The opposite of dividing is multiplying. So you multiply by negative 2. Okay, these uh, opposite operations undo each other. And we have x equals 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8. And finally, this last one. And you'll notice these are getting a little bit more tricky to do just in your brain. I know the next one, the answer is going to be 2 but a lot of you may have difficulty understanding that. So if we do opposite operations and we add 1, first of all, we have negative 2x is equal to negative 4. And finally, that is not a subtracting 2, that's a multiplying by negative 2. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. And in this case, what we have is x equals negative 4 divided by negative 2, which is positive 2.